Have you heard about the Sacred Band of Thebes, also known as the first entirely queer soldiers of ancient Greece? In Plato's philosophical dialogue called the Symposium, a group of Athenian aristocrats gathers at a feast to discuss a subject as vital to the Greeks as it is to us, love. Each guest delivers a speech in celebration of the deity Eros, describing his or her personal idea of love. One of the guests, Phaedrus, waxes poetic and references the mythological warrior Achilles, who sacrificed himself in the Trojan War for his lover Patroclus, and speculates on the gallantry of such men on the battlefield. But not all warriors fight with their armor and spear. In fact, there was once an elite group of warriors from Thebes who wore their hearts on the battlefield. Composed of more than 150 pairs of hand-picked male lovers, the sacred band of Thebes stood up against the mighty Spartans and fought for their freedom. Years after the battle, the bodies of these warriors were found buried, hands linked with one another in an image of loyalty, love, and devotion. If you want to know whether love won, stick around because I will tell you more about it. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Sacred Band of Thebes The Sacred Band was first mentioned by name in 324 BC in the oration against Demosthenes by the Athenian logographer Dinarchus. He cites the Sacred Band, which was led by the commander Pelopidas and was responsible for the Spartans' defeat at the pivotal Battle of Leuctra. But when it comes to a personal account of the sacred band of Thebes, Plutarch, a native of Cheronea, is the author of the most extensive description of this elite army. Based on his narrative, the sacred band was founded by the Boyotarch Gorgidas immediately after the expulsion of the Spartan garrison holding the Theban stronghold of Cadmea. No one really knows the exact date when the band was discovered. But a lot of historians believe that Plato was actually referring to these men in the symposium. So if we take this into consideration, we can assume that the band was founded in 379 BCE. Putting the timeline aside, stories about this elite army collective reveal how mighty and controversial the members are. Mighty, because they stood up against the Spartans controversial, because records suggest that this elite army is actually composed of male lovers, the band was Greece's first professional standing army supported by the state, and it was predicated on the idea that men who were so close to one another would fight as a coherent unit. The Thebans regarded the emotional link between the males as sacred, referring to the sacred vows that male Theban lovers would swear to each other at the sanctuary of Iolaus, Hercules' mythical lover. Because of these emotional links, the band became a force to be reckoned with that even the strong army of Sparta was not able to overcome. But many people are still skeptical about the sexuality of these men. However, Plutarch emphasized that there might be more truth to the allegation about the sexuality of this elite force. In Plutarch's Parallel Lives from the 2nd century AD records, he wrote, The sacred band, we are told, was first formed by Gorgidas of 300 chosen men to whom the city furnished exercise and maintenance and who encamped in the Cadmea, for which reason too they were called the city band, for citadels in those days were properly called cities, but some say that this band was composed of lovers and beloveds. Homosexuality in Ancient Greece In Greek history, an elite core of male lovers was unique, but homosexual partnerships were prevalent during that time. It was a rite of passage in many cities for privileged guys in their late teens to enter into a pederastic relationship with an older man, this was most likely a sexual relationship, but it was also educational. The older man assumed the dominant role of Erastes, or the lover, and the youth assumed the subservient role of Eromenos, or the beloved. In addition to physical closeness, the man mentored the youth in philosophy, politics, and poetry. The Greeks did not think of sexual orientation in our terms as straight or gay, because males were expected to marry women and create families later in life. But homosexuality was practiced to varying degrees in Athens and Sparta, and its legal position was complicated according to Plato's Pausanias. In Thebes, however, it was openly encouraged and even legally sanctioned. While poets and philosophers speculated about Eros's martial potency, the Thebans were the first to put it into effect. This is why Thebes was very accepting about creating the sacred band. 
And let's just say they made the right decision because, little did they know, this controversial elite army would bring them glory like no other. Defeating Sparta Everything unfolded during the Battle of Leuctra. The Sacred Band fought the Spartans head-on for the next decade after the coup, campaigning to drive their garrisons from the Boeotian cities. After several skirmishes, the Theban military effort culminated in 371 BCE with the Battle of Leuctra. When peace talks fell through, the Theban force was pitted against the Spartan army, which had a numerical advantage. The Sacred Band was critical to the Theban victory. The commander Epaminondas made the unusual choice to deploy his strongest units, notably the Sacred Band led by Pelopidas, on the left wing to directly engage Sparta's strongest soldiers, the Spartiates. Because of its small size and strong cohesion, the band charged at the Spartiates like a projectile, wounding their commander. When the Spartan army realized this, they began a hasty retreat. This terrible defeat was the first time a Spartan army had been beaten in three centuries. After this, the Thebans built Tropion, a monument commemorating the victory which still exists today. The victory at Leuctra forever altered Greece's geopolitical situation. All the Greeks realized that the Spartans were not as formidable as they appeared and could be defeated. The dominoes started to fall. Neighboring states, emboldened by the Spartan-led Peloponnesian League, began to revolt. In defiance of the Spartans, the Manateans built walls around their city, while Epaminondas helped fortify two cities near Sparta to serve as effective bulwarks against them. In Greece, Thebes had traditionally been regarded as a second-rate power, but it was now the dominant force, actively intervening in many Greek affairs. Despite the fact that Thebans' dominance lasted only until the 360s, Sparta would never again reach its former heights. Even as the Thebans gradually lost control of the Greeks, the sacred band fought fiercely. Pelopidas was killed while fighting for the Thessalians' liberation from the ruthless tyrant Alexander of Phirae. While Epaminondas was killed while fighting an alliance of Sparta, Athens, and other states, he was buried on the battlefield alongside his Aramanos. However, with Thebes lacking strong leadership and both coalitions fraying, there remained potential for an outside force to intervene. For instance, Philip II of Macedon, Alexander the Great's father. In 338 BCE, the decisive Battle of Cheronea pitted Philip's army of over 30,000 soldiers against a combined force of Greek states, Thebes, Athens, Corinth, and many others, totaling 35,000 troops. The Greeks fought valiantly, but were finally defeated by Philip's superior tactical understanding. A force of elite Macedonian troops headed by the youthful Alexander, who was serving under his father at the time, decimated the sacred band of Thebes. The band disbanded 40 years after its formation, leading Thebes to several victories and tipping the balance of power in Greece. Its 300 members were all murdered, and Philip had taken control of all of Greece, but the sacred band's final battle would not be forgotten. In the end, the sacred band's mass tomb was unearthed at Cheronea in the 19th century. Their skeleton's trauma indicated terrible deaths. Some had been extensively wounded by Macedonian spears, with the blade still embedded in them. One person had been struck in the head with a shield. Others had broken jaws and fractured craniums. This means Alexander clearly intended total devastation. The arrangement of the skeletons, though, was most striking. They were arranged in rows of seven or eight resembling a phalanx, and some of the dead had their arms intertwined at the elbow. This image is physical evidence of how the emotional link between these warriors overcame time and death. This will remind us that these warriors died like they had lived, as devoted lovers who remained faithful till the end. How about you? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more stories from history.